Hello everyone and welcome to Season 4 of Ten Hag's Horrific Task here on Foot Manager 22. So if you're not aware what we're doing here, essentially I am the Director of Football on Manchester United. I'm doing all of the transfers and I am letting Ten Hag manage the team, train the team, do everything basically. So basically I'm being lazy and making him do all the work I suppose. But either way, this is Season number 4 and if you've not seen the previous episodes, I do suggest you go back and check it out. Because there may be some spoilers, I might talk about some stuff that's happened elsewhere. But, let's crack straight into it. So, last season, we finished second in the Premiership, we won the FA Cup, and we got knocked out in the first round of the Champions League knockout stages, which wasn't ideal. Um, so this year, my transfers have been a bit weird. So let's have a quick look then. So these are players that, they came in this season, but technically... Uh, at the end of last season, that makes any sense, I don't really know. So, I was signed Dennis Marquez, who's been uh, basically a player I signed a while ago that's only just come through again. Won the scouts, seemed to love when they found him, so we picked up him for 3.6 million. Anton Johnson from Sweden, again, another cheap one. He couldn't get a work permit, hence why we got him being sent out on loan uh, pretty cheap as well. Sebastian Correa, though, from River Plate, he looked like one that we could get some instant impact out of. Uh, two and a half star already. Uh, to try and get him up to the next level, though, we have loaned him out to Frankfurt in the Bundesliga. So hopefully, after a good season of football, we might get ourselves an absolute cracker back next time round. Uh, and then into what is still this season, but counts as this season, if that makes any sense. Uh, we have got um, Blerim Almuka, who's a Kosovan central midfielder. Again, really good stats for a youngster. Uh, we picked him up from Roma uh, for 25 million. Costs us a lot. We sent him straight out on loan to Young Boys because, again, no work permit. Uh, next up, Bruno Paolo from Flamengo. Again, another good young player. You might be able to see a little bit of a a little bit of a, a, a hint here of what I'm going for. Lots of good young players that hopefully will develop. I mean, at the moment, there was nobody that I saw that was financially viable that was really going to improve the first team right now. So I'm baying a lot of these players based on the next two or three seasons. Uh, and this was the big one. The scouts absolutely love this guy. They said, sign him under any uh, possibility. So we did pick him up. Uh, they reckon he's going to be a star rating for the future. Uh, he's a French right back. We paid 40 million from PSG for him. He's been there for a couple of years. Uh, we managed to scout him. We've had him on the shortlist for a while, and 40 million was the cheapest I could pick him up for. But apparently, he's going to be a future star. Again, no work permits, which is the problem with Brexit these days, isn't it, for me? Uh, so, yeah, no work permits. So, again, we're going to have to hold on and see. Uh, if we can get that sorted over the next season or two. Right, so I think um, when it comes to squad-wise, again, if we have a look, squad depth. So we've got uh, De Gea in goal. Uh, we're going to keep Mamadashvili around this season. Of course, he was way on loan last year. Uh, Timber has now elevated massively up to a four-star. Uh, so he's probably going to play it right back with, uh, with Hernandez at left back. Um, with Delete and... A mixture of Varane and Ignacio at centre-back. Uh, CDM, we've got Frankie de Jong. However, it's Declan Rice who wants to play in the CDM role, hence why we've had to bring it back. And then we're going to play it with Fernandez and de Jong as the two central midfield spots. Then on the left, we're probably going to go with Rashford on the right with Sancho. And then up front, it's probably going to be Sesco. Of course, we can rotate, as you can see. Bruno Fernandes is fantastic out on the right as well, so maybe that will allow us to play uh, a different midfielder. Maybe we could play, I don't know, Scott McTominay in here or something like that, and we can just mix and match a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's why we're looking like this season, I think, a more defensive line formation by switching the attacking midfielder to a central defensive midfielder. So it will be interesting to see how it pans out. I mean, at the moment, we've had two games and... Uh, we've had three games, sorry. Two wins and a draw. And after three games, Haaland has already got nine goals. He's just sickening, isn't he? He's not real. He must just be some sort of robot. Per oh my god, look at that. He scored seven goals in one game against Brentford. Oh my god. And he scored 90th, 92nd and 94th minute. That is just brutal. Absolute brutal. Okay. 
Well, that's what we're up against. And they've picked up Osham in this season as well. They've got Vinicius Jr. Man City have really, really pushed themselves into the next level, haven't they, really, as well? Well, let's go to the end of January, see what's happening, and see if we stand any chance of uh, of succeeding this year. And here we go, then, end of January. We're currently joint top of the table alongside Liverpool. Man City dropping four points behind, which is impressive considering who, obviously, Man City have up front, I suppose, if you look at it that way. Uh, let's have a quick look and see uh, how the league is looking. So, yeah, Hallam with 26 goals, uh, 18 for Salah, 18 for Darwin Nunes at Newcastle. Uh, Sesco and Fernandez looking pretty good in the average ratings as well. Okay, we're not doing too bad then, really. Plus 33 goal difference as well. Uh, let's have a gander and see if we did many transfers this time out. We did. Okay, so we've got a couple that have been on the um, the screen for a while. Um, who do we... Do we even look at this uh, summer, did we? Okay, so we sold Diego Dallo out to Real Madrid for £43.5 million. Of course, he was superseded by the likes of Timber. Donny van der Beek went out to Juventus for £39 million. Uh, Scott McTominay to Shakhtar for £27 million. Where Shakhtar got 27 from, I've got no idea. Um, these are the ones that surprise me. These random kids that just pick up 29 million out of nowhere from uh, from Mallorca. I couldn't believe that. Uh, 21 million, sorry. And um, we sold Isaac Hansen Aaron for 9.75 million to Mainz. Uh, he's now got a much higher value, I suppose, but he wasn't really going to excel too far with us. And a couple of other smaller deals as well. This gave us a lot of money to spend, essentially. So... These two players here have already been in the works for a couple of years now. I've been waiting for them to turn 18. Um, so, of course, we've got the striker Diu Dumercy Ulembu, who is a Belgian striker, who, again, the scouts absolutely love the pants off of. So we've got him. Uh, Emilio, a young Spanish central defensive mid. We signed him when he was 16. Uh, his stats were pretty similar, so he hasn't really progressed that much over the last couple of years. But hopefully now we've got him, we can load him out and do that for him. Uh, we picked up uh, Haita Ledo, a central defensive mid from Portugal. Picking up loads of really good young rated central defensive midfielders now, aren't we? Uh, we picked up a Ricard Carlsen, the Swedish winger from Bronby. Uh, but the main signing, as you might have noticed, we picked up Elix Moriba for 90, was it 92 it said? Yeah, 92 million. Massive signing, I think. And it does mean that our trio of midfielders now at Declan Rice, um, Frankie de Jong, and Mariba, and he's only 22 as well, are going to be absolutely fantastic. So that was the main thinking behind that. I mean, if we go and look at the squad now and look at the squad depth, yeah. So we're probably playing with, say, Declan Rice here. And then Frankie de Jong and Mariba here. And then that allows us to play Fernandez as the attacking right midfielder. With Sancho and Rashford fighting for the left side. And then Sesco as the main striker. Uh, it's just looking good now. We're starting to get to a point where we've got several good players for each position. Creating that little bit of competition which is hopefully going to bring the best out of all of them. Um, so yeah, that's what we're thinking there. So yeah, it's been a pretty damn good window. We are joint top of the table. There is a chance we could do well. There is a chance we could win the Premiership. It's going to be interesting to see how it pans out. Uh, we're still in the FA Cup. We got knocked out of the Carabao Cup again. Was that the same as last season? Uh, Carabao Cup. Aston Villa in the first. Oh, Aston Villa in the quarterfinals on penalties. Um, and then this season it was Aston Villa in the quarterfinals on penalties. Wow. Back-to-back -back years, folks, so getting knocked out by Aston Villa. Um, so, yeah, we've got um, Newcastle in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Not too worried about the FA Cup anymore. We've won it two years in a row, so if we don't win it again for a while, I'm not really going to moan too much. Uh, but the Champions League and the Premiership is where we are definitely going to be focusing a lot of our time. Uh, we've got Bayer Leverkusen in the next round, which is not bad at all. Big game against Liverpool coming up in the league as well. So let's whiz on to the end of the season and see if we could consolidate any silverware. 
Well, we kept second in the Premiership. That was still pretty damn good again. Second highest goals scored, second lowest goals conceded, which is fantastic. But still, not quite enough. Liverpool finished five points ahead of us. It was tricky, wasn't it? I mean, let's have a look and see where we lost it. I mean, we lost 3-1 to Liverpool. Got knocked out of the FA Cup semi-finals. Oh, it was the Brighton buggered us as well. I mean, it's not... Well, thinking about it, I mean... We lost points to Liverpool, Arsenal, West Ham, uh, Brighton, and Everton, didn't we? Yeah, it's not ideal. So, Champions League, we got to the semi-finals before being knocked out. FA Cup, we got knocked out in the semi-final. Oh, we were always, always so close, weren't we? Second in the league and semi-finals for both the FA Cup and the Champions League. Again, there's a lot of work that needs to be done still, isn't it? I mean, we've, we've, we've done well. Let's have a quick look. So Sesco picking up 32 goals in 44 games in his first full season here, which is fantastic with 11 assists. Bruno Fernandes with 21 goals and 16 assists. Rashford with 18 goals and 6 assists. Makuku getting more game time this season with 14 goals and 5 assists. Sancho with 9 and 8. Hannibal picking up 7 goals and 13 assists. Um, Mariba, who was here for half a season, picked up 5 assists and 3 goals. An average rating of 7.19. That's not terrible. Um, so, yeah, I think we're definitely moving in the right direction, of course. We've got a very uh, good young set of players that are all developing and going to get better and better year on year on year. So, hopefully, we can see more and more of that moving forward. So, yeah. Let's see how many goals Haaland got. Another 40 this season. He got 40. Darwin Nunes got 26. Lewandowski with 24. So Mbappe didn't make it on the top three this time. <sighs> so there's still a lot that needs to be done, isn't there? Which is not always the bridesmaid, never the bride at this point in time. I mean, we still finish convincingly in the Champions League. So, I mean, that is the main thing that I think Ten Hag needs to do in his first few years is just consolidate our place and, and make it to the point where it's an expectation to get Champions League football every season now again rather than it being a plus if we do get it. So we're at that point at the moment. I don't know how much longer it's going to take us to really get to the point where we're going to elevate and challenge. Uh, but hopefully it's going to be as soon as possible. Right. Uh, well, we're going to call it there for now. That's the end of season number four. So hopefully um, that has been, well, not been useful. It's not really useful, is it really? But hopefully someone has enjoyed that. Uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to come back in a couple of days' time with season number five and see if we have enough to push ourselves on to the next level.